Happy Friday, Canada. Welcome to Fake News Friday, the show that keeps Canada's failing, fake, and always very biased legacy media in check. My name is Harrison Faulkner, filling in for Andrew Lawton uh, as the lead of the show today, as the host of the show, occupying the seat I usually sit in is the very talented Rupa Superman. Yeah, we've done this a few times, so we're doing it again. Rupa, it's good to have you on the show. It's great to be here with you, Harrison. So it seems like another week goes by and we're always talking about the CBC. They, 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 they seem to have this real commitment, Rupa, of making documentaries or programs that are kind of just rooted in hating Canada or really, you know, casting shade on this country. And I want to show you this first, this first story we found, which is just really perfect for this program, and it's totally insane. So it turns out that the CBC is introducing a, a, a new variety show on CBC Gem. You have to pay for this one because, of course, the money we pay to the CBC isn't enough. You have to pay about $5 a month to access this show. And when I read it out to you, maybe you'll start to think about other places you could probably put your $5 to that are far better than this because this is, this is really something. So there's a new program out on the CBC called Lido TV, and it's a variety show. And I just want to read to you the show description, because it really just it really just kind of, I think, shows us all where the CBC is at this current time. So there's a new program, it's called Little TV, and this is how the CBC describes it. Little TV is a variety show with a mission to help people cope with life in a world that sometimes feels like it's falling apart. Filled with hilarious sketches, inspiring interviews, immersive documentaries, surreal animations, and puppets. How fun. At the center of it is our host, Lido Pimienta, the award-winning Colombian-Canadian musician, artist, and mother whose hilarious, curious, and tender personality drives the action. The series tackles themes ranging from feminism and privilege to colonialism and success and features appearances by Nelly Furtado, musicians Shad and Kitty, writer Sarah Haggy, nor black nor white co-founder Mariga Capadilla, and artists Jess Sachese and Jessica Kurahanga. So anyway, it's going to be all about feminism, Rupa. It's going to be all about tackling the pr the privileges of colonialism and success. Wow, I'm just I'm just I'm just really chomping at the bit to get this Lido TV program. <laughs> well, uh, that's that. Uh, that's not me. <laughs> I, I've seen. I saw a clip. Uh, someone shared a clip from the show. I'm not quite sure what to make of this, except that I'm really angry that our tax dollars are uh, put. You know, are, are going towards uh, funding this kind of thing. Um, well, for one thing, the talking tomato totally creeped me out. Um, I thought it was a rock at first, but then some. But then it turns out it's a tomato, which 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 talks to you about uh, colonialism and uh, racism and that sort of thing. Um, but you know, none none of this sh should surprise us, really, right? Because this is very much in line with all of the uh, woke nonsense that the CBC has been promoting over the years. And unfortunately, these are our tax dollars uh, funding this. Uh, I'm a little confused, Harrison, because I thought this was a children's show, but is it a variety show? It's a children's show. It's a children's variety show. I'm not quite sure who this is uh, geared towards because some people said this is not necessarily geared towards kids. Uh, but, you know, if this is geared towards kids, obviously this is um, a form of indoctrination. Look, I, I think kids should be taught about colonialism, the evils of colonialism. Uh, there's you know, no sensible person is going to deny that you know colonialism uh, was not was not was not good. Uh, but and it had some uh, bad uh, you know bad consequences for the people it colonized. But I think we have to approach this very carefully when it comes to teaching children this sort of thing. Um, I think teaching history has to be balanced. Uh, and uh, where I where I disagree is that, you know, we're in this constant state of self-flagellation when it comes to our history, uh, where, you know, we're constantly blaming uh, the white colonizer for everything that's gone wrong with society. And, uh, and that's not a good uh, uh, direction to go in. So by all means, teach children about 
history and uh, and colonialism and racism and so on and so forth. But I don't agree with the approach that uh, the CBC is taking as far as this show is concerned. No, exactly. And so you're exactly right about this confusion when we first see it. And we're going to play that. We're going to play this this trailer for you because you really have to see it for yourself. When you first see it, your first instinct surely is, of course, this is a television. This is a kids show. This is meant for kids. But nowhere in the show description does it say that. It's just on the CBC Gem streaming platform. So we're going to play the trailer for you. You tell us what you think. First of all, if you think this is for kids, okay, this is what you probably think, right? You probably think it is for kids. Apparently it's not. Check out this trailer. This is where your tax dollars are going, guys. This is where it's going. Check this out. Hi. And welcome. Hey girl, happy to be here. Good for you. Uh, uh. What a beautiful day to talk about colonialism. Juicy. How does it feel to be responsible for 9-11? Ani, Lido. We are giving your family's land back to the local Anishinaabe people! Sounds like freedom to me. Isn't it true that feminists don't like boys? I think we're really gonna need this episode. I had to be this delicate flower when all I wanted to do was scream. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like my wise indigenous grandmother always says. You're not ugly, you're just poor. 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 Where am I? And, and Rupa, you bring up the whole point about the fact that our taxpayer dollars are going to this and really many Canadians shouldn't be happy about this, but it gets even worse actually, because not only of course are our tax dollars going to these CBC programs, which of course are kind of rooted in Canada bashing, rooted in painting this country out to be some evil place, but it gets even worse. This, this pr production company, Lido TV, get this, they actually received $70,000 of taxpayer money from Factor, which I guess is uh, uh, which is part of the, the, the government funding, they got $70,000 to, I guess, help promote these programs. 25000 of those $70,000 is under the guise of emergency support. So really, the government clearly d desperately didn't want this uh, little TV program to go under during COVID. So they, they pump it up with taxpayer money, and then, of course, on comes the CBC to promote this program, which is clearly rooted in, I guess, Canada bashing. And before we move on, it's probably worth also just pulling up the episode list. So if any of you guys, I don't imagine you are, but if any of you are planning to watch this program on CBC Gem, remember, it costs you extra money on top of it. Here are the episodes you can expect. The first one, colonialism. How great. The next one, beauty. The next one after that, hate. And feminism, privilege and success. I can only imagine, Rupa, what that is all about. It's just Another classic CBC thing, which clearly doesn't deserve our taxpayer money, but for some reason, they keep getting it. Honestly, Harrison, I think your show, or my show, should get $70,000. Exactly. Where is, where is our, where is our <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of that comes from you guys, of course, but we don't, we're, unlike the CBC, we can't rely on taxpayer dollars. We have to rely on donations. Well, there's another story that comes, and there's another theme that we're constantly seeing. It's about, what is it, really ever since... Paul, you have kind of burst onto the scene of the CBC leadership. What we've seen from the legacy media has been this, this, this commitment, this real, like, they're, they're, they're very loyal at holding the opposition leader, uh, at, at opposing the opposition leader, Rupert. They're not very clear, they're not really determined, it, it appears, to hold the government to account, especially now with Pierre Polyev as the officially new, the, the new leader. The legacy media are committed to opposing him at all, at all potential stops, right? So here comes this National Observer article, which we found that we just thought really deserved some attention on Fake News Friday. This one was written by Max Fawcett over the National Observer. The headline reads, Investigation reveals Polyev populist and pro-natural gas groups spread fertilizer disinformation to whip up outrage against Trudeau. Disinformation, where have you heard that before, Rupa? So in this article, 
the National Observer basically tries to say that uh, not only is Pierre Polyev promoting the, this disinformation about the fertilizer reduction scheme, which we know is true, which we know is the case, apparently also groups like Ontario Proud, the Facebook group, uh, and us, True North Rupa, we are apparently pushing out disinformation regarding the fertilizer emissions reduction scheme. If this is not providing cover for the government, if this is not providing cover for Justin Trudeau, then I don't know what is, Rupa. Well, I, um, yeah, absolutely, I agree with you, Harrison. Uh, but we know this is a class, classic tactic of the left. Um, anybody who disagrees with them or anybody who criticizes the Trudeau government are agents of disinformation um, and, uh, and, you know, and, the, and that they're not worth listening to. These are just classic smear tactics. Um, w w and they refuse to engage with the arguments because that's, that's completely missing from the discourse, right? It's it's always jumping to label your opponent as uh, as as a bad person or or a racist or far right, uh, and none of this is helpful. But uh, but then again, we should expect this uh, from 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 these folks because this is this is this is their mo. This is uh, their this is how they operate. Um, but you know, the unfortunate thing is. The, the real issue is getting lost in all of this. There's a real problem here. Do you really want to push these uh, issues in the context of an economy that is uh, uh, that is slowing down and inflation is on the rise? Those are the real debates that we should be having. Uh, but that's just a deflection, right? Uh, c calling your uh, opponent's names uh, is just a deflection. That's what it comes down to. And I always struggle with this concept of, of these um, left-wing news outlets covering disinformation. In my opinion, if it's disinformation and it's not true, the last thing that these left-wing news outlets would, would want to do, Rupa, is to amplify that disinformation, to write a whole story about it, instead of actually just telling us what, they ap what appears to them to be the truth about this. If it is true uh, that the fertilizer emissions reduction scheme is not what we're making it out to be, write a story about it. But if you're writing a story about the disinformation itself, you're just amplifying it and then you're not even actually doing your job of basically telling the truth. It's very bizarre to me. And I want to pull in some of the, the quotes from this article because again, it just, it, it makes me laugh all these stories about, you know, disinformation. They're just amplifying the disinformation. They write here uh, that 30 of the top performing posts were made by right-wing populist groups or media outlets, many with a track record of attacking the Trudeau government. Oh, like holding the government to account, Rupa. Maybe yeah. that's... <laughs> <laughs> it makes me laugh. It just, it really does. Yeah. And then yeah. it goes on, it writes, this list includes groups like Ontario Proud, which holds itself out as a grassroots community group, but operates anonymously and is part of a family of similar pages linked to conservative operatives and right-wing media outlets like True North. And then it goes on to say at the end here, right-wing populism works by politicians finding groups that are allegedly victimized by those in power and claiming to stand up for them. Politicians spreading inaccurate information about the fertil federal fertilizer plan, then saying they will stand up for farmers against it, is emblematic of this process. How convenient, right? How convenient. It's, di it's disinformation, Rupa, for a conservative politician to say they stand up with farmers and to criticize a Trudeau policy. Again, this is just blatantly covering for the government covering for the government under the guise of what? We're gonna, are we really going to call this journalism? It's crazy. Uh, I wouldn't even call it, forget journalism. What is the analytical component here? Like what, why is it disinformation? You know, you just, you, if you just keep saying disinformation, 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 you're not really saying anything, right? It's just, it's, it's, it's not really saying anything to me. It's not really helping me understand why this is disinformation. So um, I think that piece itself is disinformation. Of course. Yeah, exactly. But again, we're not, we're not the ones jumping out trying to, highlight disinformation like these people are, which I find just to be, you know, using the word emblematic, they use that word in their article. This is to me is emblematic of the problem we're seeing on the other side of the debate with these outlets that are basically writing news stories about other news programs, about outlets like us. We talked about it last week on Fake News Friday, where once again, True North was the subject of a story. It's just, it's a weird phenomenon. Anyway, sticking with Pierre Polyev, this one came in on Thursday, so just yesterday, and when I saw it, I couldn't believe it, actually. I thought it was a, I thought it was a joke from a parody account. Turns out it's a real global news story, and this one is, this one is a special one. This is the headline. Pierre Polyev's YouTube channel included hidden misogynistic tag to promote videos. So, in the story, this is how it works. This is how, this is how the story is written. 
Pierre Polyev's official YouTube videos included a hidden tag appealing to misogynistic online movements that Canada's intelligence agencies view as a danger. A global news analysis of 50 of Polyev's most recent YouTube videos show that they included a tag, hidden from viewers but not from, the, uh, not from the video's publisher, used by a misogynistic online movement. The tag, hashtag MGTOW, is an acronym for men going their own way, a mostly online movement comprised of anti-feminists who attempt to cut women completely out of their lives. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, this movement overlaps with more aggressive forms of male supremacy. Anyway, essentially what goes on is that Global News reached out to Polyev's campaign, or Polyev's team rather. Polyev uh, distanced and denounced and separated himself from it and, uh, and uh, apologized for it. But I didn't really think that was... The whole point to me is the fact that Global News really thinking they're doing hard they're doing hard cutting journalism here they're really doing their their watergate special of mm -hmm. <laughs> deep diving over polyev's 50 last youtube videos to find a tag a, yeah. a, a hashtag of a mm -hmm. youtube video which i'm sure they probably put in 40 or 50 tags on each video this mm. one they found one and they're 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 like hyper focusing in on it as though Pierre Polyev is is again they're trying to paint this image of a guy who's a dangerous populist who's appealing to dangerous misogynists. It's embarrassing journalism. I'd be embarrassed to put my name on an article like this, Rupa. Yeah. Well, first of all, the hashtag uh, "men going their own way." I I know a little bit about this movement, and uh, um, and I'm, I'm I'm and I'm speaking as a woman, um, um, and I'm not a biologist, but I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I mean, these are men uh, who have just chosen to focus on their own uh, self-development. Uh, they're just doing their own thing. They don't want anything to do with women. Um, they, you know, the last time I checked, I think these people were called bachelors and women who did that were called spinsters. Right. Um, so I. Yes, there. I think there are certain uh, elements uh, in this movement that are seen as misogynistic. They're seen as uh, men who just really, really hate women, and some of them engage in harassing women online. Obviously, you know that's where I draw draw a line. But hey, look, if men want to go their own way, uh, you know who am I to stop them? Like you know, it's it, I, I I respect uh, personal autonomy. You want to go your own way, go, by all means. Uh, by the way, there are women who are also going their own way. Uh, this I, I just discovered this morning there's a group on Reddit called Women Going Their Own Way and for similar reasons they hate men um, and uh, you know they just don't want to do their own thing and again the last time I checked women going their own way were called spinsters so you know it's um, I, I think a lot is being made out of this hashtag and why on earth is CSIS obsessed with this group uh, do we not have more serious things to think about like um you know what's going on in Iran, for example, or uh, you know, Rush, the Russia Ukraine thing. Um, you know, I'm just I'm I'm just a little baffled by why our uh, intelligence uh, services are you know are focused on this group. Hopefully, it's not taking away from the other important stuff that they should be focused on. Um, I think you know, from a political point of view, I think Pierce team. Uh, made the right call in terms of removing this um this this hashtag think about the fact that they're under uh you know great deal of scrutiny uh, and uh, and at this point, you know, they really can't afford to, um, you know, have this kind of uh, thing, um, you know, follow them wherever they go on the campaign. Uh, but having said that, the movement itself, like I said, it, uh, I think there are men who just in in that in that movement who just. You know, I've just chosen a life of celibacy and they want to lead life like they're monks and lead their lives like they're monks and they don't want anything to do with tradition, uh, social norms and, oh, uh, you know, which which would require them to make women happy. And, and they're just deviating from that um, and they just don't want to be on this traditional path. What exactly is wrong with that? No, exactly. Know. There's so yeah. much to get into here, Rupa. I mean, of course, yeah. they are, they, of course you, you make the point that they're under more scrutiny. Well, they're, they seem yeah. to be... Polyev seems to be under more scrutiny than Justin Trudeau these days. It's crazy. I don't, I don't believe that there's a news outlet right now going through Justin Trudeau or the Liberal Party's videos. As, they might be doing it now, actually, right? But it's just, it's just crazy to me that this is considered to be journalism. This is considered to be what global news is doing. Remember, they've been, they've been trying a lot of these different things on Polyev. You can, we can go back to the Diagalon guy, the handshake. 
which obviously was was a was a swing and a miss from Global News and from I guess from the opposition against Pierre Paul. They really wanted that one to stick. That one didn't stick. Then they did earlier this week. They got Alex Jones to endorse Pierre Polyev, and that then they tried to make that a big deal. Like, oh, this is a this is it. This is the one that's going to paint Polyev as this dangerous far right populist. That one didn't stick. And now they're doing this, and it just seems as though. It's very, very coordinated. And I'll tell you why I think that actually, because this story came out on Thursday morning. By Thursday at 2 p.m. at question period, Justin Trudeau comes up and instead of answering the question Pierre Polyev addresses to him, Justin Trudeau turns around and basically uses this exact story to say that Pierre Polyev is appealing to dangerous far-right uh, misogynists. Yeah, it's, unbelievable. It's insane to me, Rupa. It's so clearly... He, global news is so clearly trying to do the government's bidding. I don't think I've ever actually seen something so obvious in the in the media space. It's it's unbelievable. Well, do you, uh, Harrison, you and I were at an event in Toronto on September 26th, uh, the, D the Democracy Fund event, uh, which featured a discussion between Conrad Black and Rex Murphy. And you, I uh, recall what Rex Murphy said, uh, and I think that that was a quote of the evening for me. He said, a good chunk of the Ottawa Press Gallery functions as um, an opposition party to the leader of the opposition. And I think that's what's going on here. Um, uh, the um, um, Pierre and and the conservatives are being held to account uh, m much more so than uh, the uh, Justin Trudeau. Uh, look, this is again trying to deflect from uh, some very big issues. For example, on the weekend, um, the, uh, the there was a big protest uh, just outside of Toronto, um, uh, protesting for Masa Amini, the 22-year-old uh, Kurdish woman who was beaten to death uh, in an Iranian uh, prison uh, a few weeks ago, which has sparked um, uh, protests all across Iran uh, and with uh, women leading uh, the protests. And uh, the group that organized the protest in Toronto reached out to uh, Justin Trudeau and the Foreign uh, Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie, and they didn't even acknowledge the invite, apparently, according to the organizers. Uh, meanwhile, um, so the protest happened on Saturday. On, on Sunday, uh, Justin Trudeau goes bungee jumping. Uh, now, where is the scrutiny here, right? Uh, if you, if you, if you, if you're pointing to your opponent and calling him a misogynist, well. How serious are you about, um, you know, feminist foreign policy and all of that stuff that you frequently talk about and you can't even show up to a protest um, in, in, in honor of a woman who was brutally murdered uh, by the um, by the, the theocratic uh, regime in Iran? I think it's just hypocrisy. And I think this kind of thing just deflects from all of those bigger issues. 100% well put exactly it's just it's 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 really um you know one set of rules for the prime minister and one set of rules for the opposition and anyone else uh, anyone else gets Trudeau's set of rules if they kind of show loyalty. You don't see uh, really heavy criticism from Global News on Jagmeet Singh, for example. That's because he falls in line behind Justin Trudeau. And of course, it all comes down to how much money you're willing to cough up. How much money are you willing to stuff into the pockets of these guys? It really does work. Um, and the truth is, it kind of actually is a, it's a bit of a problem looking forward. If Pierre Polyev becomes prime minister... Uh, the, the media is going <laughs> to, they're going to be expecting something in, in, from Pierre Polyev. And part of, part of my cynical mind almost goes to the point of, why don't you just fund them the money as well? Like if, if Justin Trudeau is going to do that and he's going to get all the coverage from it, of course, it's not conservative. It's not actually good to do. But you also want to at least give, give the liberals back, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, what they, a taste of their own medicine, you could say, right? I mean, it just, it, it does ask, you do, you do have to ask the question, what would they, what's going to happen with the media bailouts when the conservatives get in power? Hopefully it's gone forever and they have to rely on their own, on their oh, own. Oh yeah, journals. absolutely. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous I, uh, that, uh, uh, that we fund the media here. <laughs> the government funds the media, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Sure. I, I, I can't think of any other country that does that. No, um, exactly. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. And, you know, no matter what anybody tells you, you you know, I have, a, I have great respect for a great deal of journalists in the legacy media, and they'll say, no, this money is not affecting the way we operate. I, I call BS on that. You know, at some level, it is going to uh, determine the kinds of stories you pursue, uh, the lines that you draw uh, when it comes to certain things that you um, that that 
you're you're not going to be reporting on. So I, you know, I I I do think that this money, um, that the the funding needs to stop, uh, and uh, it, it should have it should, it should stop right now. It, uh, Justin Trudeau should stop it actually. But if it doesn't uh, happen, then I I really hope the Conservatives, if and when they come to power, put an end to this. Absolutely. And yeah, I recall, I recall a conversation on one of the Candace Malcolm show interviews with Paul Wells, who went, he, he joined Candace's show uh, when he launched his own Substack and left the legacy media. And he talked exactly about this, that the, they don't feel like they're influenced by the money, but there's no way you can convince the public that they're not biased in some way. Well, we try and end the show these days. It's, it's a new theme we're running with on a lighter note, on a, on a funnier story as best we can. And Because again, it's not always easy to find funny fake news, but when, when you're looking at the CBC, usually something comes up every seven days or so. So we're, we're usually okay. And sure enough, this one did. So this hour has 22 minutes, which presumably is supposed to be a comedy show. But if you've seen any of their skits, they're really not that funny. This hour has 22 minutes, which is the CBC state-funded comedy show. Go figure with that one. They have basically, for their 30th anniversary, for their 30th, uh, 30th season episode, they have done this new sort of rebranding or attempt to rebrand with their program. And I want to read some of it because it, it, is, it is quite funny. The, the title of this uh, Canadian press article for the announcement of this rebranding is this. This hour has 22 minutes taking aim at inflation, racism in 30th season. Oh, I'm sure it's going to be even funnier, Rupa, now, now that they're going after racism. And at the end of this, at the end of this long story, I did read it, uh, all of it, unfortunately. And it's all just sort of about talking about the, the story of 22 minutes. But at the end of the story, they get into this bit about one of the new cast members on the show. And it's about this new cast member who openly admits that she got her position because of affirmative action. Check this out. She writes, since joining the show in 2022 as a writer and supporting performer, she was promoted to star in the 2022 edition, joining Trent McClellan, Stacey McGonigal, and Critch, a feat she part, she part credits to 22 Minutes alumni Susan Kent, who the woman's name is Amu Kwando, who Amu Kwando says insisted that she be replaced with a woman of color upon her departure. An intense request, she says, like that is the reason I got hired, essentially. So she, <laughs> this woman, this black woman openly admits that she's on the show now because of the fact that she was supposed to be replaced by a woman of color. I, again, I just think that that exposes the CBC for what they are. And then at the end, this woman kind of just summarizes for all Canadians group about what we can expect for this special 30th season of 22 Minutes. She writes this, Especially with the rise of fascism, Canadians are waiting for a real opinion about our current landscape. I can't wait for 22 minutes to continue to critique that because I think we've really been on the button with that this year. Wow, so 22 minutes, they're going after fascism, they're going after racism and inflation. Uh, the, the material, I, I'm sure it's just endless, Rupa. Yeah, so uh, Harrison, I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming uh, they're going to be talking about when it comes to racism, they're going to tackle Justin Trudeau's blackface. When it comes to the rise of fa fascism, hopefully they'll talk about the Emergencies Act and how a peaceful protest was, uh, you know, was, was uh, you know, the way a peaceful protest civil disobedience movement in Canada was dealt with. Uh, so I'm hoping that they deal with all of that stuff. But you know what? I'm not holding my breath because I think this is going to be... One of the, those things, one of these woke humor type things, uh, which is not exact, which is not funny at all. And uh, and it does. I think this is going to be another way to um, attack Pierre Polyevra. I think that's I think that's what this is going to be about. And uh, again, it's our tax uh, funded. Uh, it's it's uh, it's our taxpayers money going going to fund this kind of stuff. Um, and um, yeah, it's um, it's it's unfortunate. I, I you know, I stopped watching this hour tw has 22 minutes many, many years ago because it just stopped being funny. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, the, yeah. we're seeing the death of late time television, these comedy mm -hmm. shows, right? It was like Donald Trump broke them. Donald Trump came along. All of these programs in the U.S. and in Canada, they only focused on Trump. And now all of a sudden they can't, they can't make jokes about the other guy. They can't make jokes about the person who's on the other side of the, uh, on the other side of the house or on the other side of the aisle. And uh, I think it's basically ruined them. And what a surprise. I mean, I hope that they go after the blackface. I hope they go after emergencies act. But like you said, I'm not holding my breath. I'm not optimistic. No, but here's, here, yeah, here's the thing, Harrison. I mean, for a show that is not exactly very funny at all, um, it, it manages to survive somehow uh that would never that would never happen with our shows right 
Yeah. Uh, no, exactly. You know, we, we see we see the death of late time in the U.S. because they're actual businesses. CBC, they're, they're never going to go away. <laughs> we, we keep giving them billions of dollars. They're just going to keep pumping out this crap. We're going to get 22 minutes, and we're going to get this new Lido TV program with the talking <laughs> tomato. Can't wait for it, Rupa. Well, anyway, it's been a great it's been great episode of Fake News Friday. Thank you for joining me. That was Rupa Superman. You can catch her show every Thursday now, and you can catch my show, Ratioed, as well on Thursdays. My name is Harrison Faulkner. This was Fake News Friday. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much.